Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Hannah and I'm here today to film a bit of a snarky video for you. I'm in a snarky mood. I was like just chatting to my book quality friends about this um, over the weekend and me and CJ were being a bit deranged. But yeah, um, Jay and Grace were like, go for it. It's funny when you're mean. So this is obviously all meant in jest. I'm not trying to make fun of or mock any of these authors. Like obviously it's incredibly impressive to even write a book as someone who's attempting to write a book. Like I don't, um, doubt the hard work that went into them. These are just books that I personally couldn't get on board with and a bit of a conversation around sort of why I picked them up to start with and maybe where I went wrong in that conversation. So these are the books I've DNF'd this year so far, I think. I'm saying I think, cause I'm not sure if I DNF some of these towards the very end of last year, but I thought it would be fun to include them anyway, just because <coughs> I've never filmed one of these before and but it might be interesting. So I DNF'd a string of like a new releases recently. Um, and I thought I would start with those. So the first one is What a Shame by Abigail Bergstrom. So Abigail Bergstrom is a literary agent turned now author um, who writes in the, I would describe as sad girl millennial fiction genre. And this book claims to talk about the experience of a protagonist who's recently broken up with a long-term boyfriend um, and her, she moves back into a share house, which is, conveniently owned by one of her rich best friends and um, her friends set about trying to expel the trauma of the breakup from her and it says that they will like go on to participate in lots of different um, rituals and sort of like uh, alternative ways of thinking about breakups I guess um, like the occult and the absurd and women's circles and all that kind of stuff which like that sounded really interesting to me because I thought it was going to be funny and that's where I made a mistake because it's actually not funny it's just very irritating I think it just comes down to personal taste like obviously humor is so subjective but I think at this point I've read so many of these books in this genre that I needed to be interesting enough to stay with it which I feel like oh, this premise sounds like it would be but it's just the same old shit like the same old tired jokes, the same old like, let's pretend we're all on the left and we think it's so funny to make fun of everyone who's not like us. Um, let's make sure we include like a diverse range of characters, but we just keep talking about their skin tone instead of any other personality attributes. And then I started just to feel a bit weird about the way they were using these, um, I guess like different methods, like this women's circle, sound baths. And you know, there's a whole other conversation about what those things are and who, um, who their origins belong to. And I just started to think like, oh, I actually don't think this is gonna be what I want to read. And I think I'm gonna be more annoyed than I am. Enjoy, like enjoy any of it. And I think that obviously is comment to say like, oh, maybe you could read these books and then critique them. And I know that's like what a lot of people on Booktube do. But for me, like I read like without sounding selfish, I think I've said this before, but I read number one for myself. Like I read for my own enjoyment. I don't read just to review books on the internet or to make fun of them or to even critique them like reading is a pastime and a hobby and although like now it sometimes is my job or part of my job it's not like I'm not I'm not a critic or like someone who makes content just to tear down books like I don't I don't think that's interesting funny or clever so I didn't want to like read this book and go on to hate it just to tell you about how much I hate it because I don't really think that's worthwhile to me at least um but I know I had then, normally what I do is when I'm thinking about DNFing a book, so I don't DNF books that rapidly, um, but normally I will then go onto like Storygraph, Goodreads or Instagram and look at the tags and see what other people have said about it, uh, particularly people who I know read like I do, or not even that necessarily read like I do because I saw lots of people loving this book, but I will see the reviews and see if people have said things, picked out particular things that they either enjoyed or didn't enjoy and where I fall on those. So I saw someone saying like, oh, I don't know, this feels a bit like white women co-opting spaces. And I was like, oh, that's how I was feeling. Or someone says like, oh, the ending's actually kind of crap and it's all a bit rushed. I was like, oh, not gonna be worth it then to finish it. And I sort of will gauge what other people have said, whether that's good or bad and see if that compares to what I was thinking anyway. And in this case it did. And I decided, you know what, that's not for me and that's fine. That was the three, I'm gonna talk about actually all NetGalley arcs. So yeah, I will review it on NetGalley and say I didn't finish it and why I didn't finish it, which is fine. Then I started reading Vagabonds, which I was really excited about and had seen, to be honest, not that many reviews. I think it only came out a couple of days ago and I had seen 
the publicist that for the book I follow and was raving about it and I'd read into the author which sounded brilliant and then I had um seen people starting to read it but I hadn't seen any full reviews yet and I started reading it and was like oh this I don't think this is for me and then I got to a chapter that I was so invested in so if I didn't say this is a book about a group of vagabonds and it starts the definition of the word vagabond in the Nigerian context talks about how vagabond is like a basically a queer person and who someone who engages in homosexuality and that's a considered illegal in their country and sort of the repercussions of that um and the American cover of this makes me laugh because it says a novel underneath it, which I feel like American publish publishers love to put a novel on everything when it's not a novel. And this does not feel like a novel to me. So I went into it thinking it was going to be a straight linear narrative about this group of like <coughs> ragtag underground queer people trying to go against the grain, which it is, there is that in it, but there's a lot of magical realism in it, which is fine, I can get on board with, but to the point where I found it quite confusing because it was coupled with this huge cacophony of characters that we only meet once. Um, and it does read, to, it read to me the first, like I read quite a lot of it, like I would say like 90 pages and it did read to me like a short story collection, but which is fine. But I think CJ is this in the recent video. I didn't go into it thinking it was gonna be that. So I just kept, my brain kept trying to work out like, okay, so who's that, who's that? When are they coming back? Who's their relationship to this? Who's their relationship to that? And I think if I started reading it knowing it was a short story collection, perhaps I would have been more on board. There was one chapter I read, which was like this really interesting concept of this person who became a driver for a, like a very rich and wealthy, um, like Nigerian oligarch basically, and was, but they were not allowed to talk. And like your mouth is like sealed shut. And it was a lot about language and secrecy and I loved all of its commentary particularly its commentary on corruption and Nigerian politics found that all really interesting there's another story about like <coughs> their version of like fairy godmothers um which I enjoyed but there was other ones that I found completely like uh, like did not understand what was going on at all had no connection to anything from a previous story or the next story and I couldn't quite piece it together and this book felt like a me problem like I know other people are going to enjoy this but for me it was just too confusing and it didn't quite necessarily fit together and I was a, felt like I was being deceived. I was missold something that I thought it was gonna be and it wasn't, which is a shame. But I would be interested in other people's review of that one because um, yeah, I really want to love it. And like I said, I did read quite a lot of it. Okay, probably my biggest disappointment because I was really excited for the concept of this one. And I feel like that is sometimes the worst is when the idea is so good, but the execution just doesn't come off for me. And that was the School for Good Mothers. I know CJ had already DNF'd it, and I think perhaps Jay had tried to read it or was going to read it. Um, but I had seen this raved about on my Instagram. Like, I mean, I had not seen a bad word. People were obsessing over this book, like, such page turner, so addictive, can't get past, like, da -da -da. and I was like, okay, okay. And I had an arc of it, luckily. And obviously, this is also why I wanted to make this video, because a lot of these books have just come out, and because they're art, I got an arc of them. I don't want you to spend your money on a hardback if, of, like, 20 quid if you then hear me talk about it and think, oh, actually, that doesn't sound like me either. So the concept of this book is that a mother is, it was like a big brother dystopian kind of 1984 setup and a mother is caught um, like doing something that is wrong with her child and then she is taken away to like a reform school essentially and her child is brought back to be cared for by her like ex-husband and his new shine and squeaky clean girlfriend, the younger model, the yoga teacher, blah, blah, blah. My issue with this book is the original infraction, which I can tell you, I don't really think it's a spoiler because it happens in the first 10 pages, is a big deal. Like it's set up to feel like dystopian. There's all these cameras and she's being watched. But what she does, leave her child, her toddler, like in a, um, in a toddler, what do you call it, swing for three hours while she goes and does her job and gets coffee. Like that's a big infraction. And that's also something that like, in reality today, people would not be okay with. And I just felt like, because we started on that premise, I couldn't then go on to believe the, um, like the rest of the dystopian elements felt like really jarring to me because it wasn't, like I felt like it would have been so much more of, like I would have been pulled in so much more if it was a really tiny infraction that she had taken place and it would have felt really amped up the environment but it felt almost too close to reality like I couldn't quite place where we were in this dystopian and then some of the storytelling became to, like began to be quite lazy and I felt like it was just like irritating to read and then that's when I was like saying to my friends that's when I know I need to stop because 
if I DNF a book and I'm just annoyed by it and I think, oh, that's not really for me, that's fine, instead of going on to read it and hating it and then feeling resentful that I wasted my time. Um, so yeah, for me, I just don't think the original premise, um, like the transfer from the original premise to the actual storyline was not pulled off for me because I felt like it would have been so much better if the infraction was something really tiny and then the reaction was out of proportion and we were um, reacting along with the mother thinking like that's so unfair but I didn't really feel the sense of injustice that the main character felt I understand the social commentary around like motherhood and comp like competitiveness and perfectionism and, and a mother never being good enough but I felt like I was uh, almost on side with the social worker because what she did wasn't really right <laughs> um, so yeah I don't know just wasn't for me that one spoke about this book kind of recently in a vlog um which is sky papers which my lovely friend sage sent me and this again i think was just not for me like i couldn't get on board with the writing style i found it like i was just getting jarred by the sentence structure and it felt um yeah like the writing style wasn't elevated enough for me to get past the annoying characters if that makes sense so this is again actually like kind of a surveillance novel um a group of three friends who were sort of anarchist, traveling, living on the realms, like on the outskirts of society kind of vibe, um, squatters. And there is these like interluding passages between the actual plot with our main characters being watched by these surveillance cameras. Um, but by page like 130, which is like halfway through the book, we still don't know why those cameras are there or what they really mean. And I'm just getting so unbelievably irritated with this main character who's like the worst person you'll ever meet in any hostel you ever go traveling to that I couldn't get over my frustration for him and then I didn't care enough about the cameras to find out what happened. That was quite a late DNF for me actually um, but I probably would have DNF'd it early if I wasn't buddy reading it with my friend Sean because I was trying to push through because I wanted to be a good buddy reader but in the end I was like oh Sean this is actually putting me in a bad mood <laughs> so I ended up DNFing. Okay then um, one which I spoke about in a my January, like what I'm excited for, and I thought I would talk about it because I a lot of people commented saying they're excited. And this is Hand, an Anxious Mind Unpicked by Lauren Brown. I read this partially for work because I wrote an article that's coming out about um, skin picking disorder, but and this book claims to be a memoir on skin picking, but it is not really that. And I think it's a case of mismarketing where, which I find this really frustrating with publishers. And I see it more and more in like nonfiction where they blow up one element of a memoir or nonfiction to say this is a book about that when really that makes up a really tiny portion of the book. And the book's actually just about childhood and pop culture and growing up poor and like these other conversations. And similarly to um, Vagabonds, I felt deceived by the premise and by what I was going into this book for. Um, so then I was left more disappointed than if I was just told this is a memoir about a girl growing up in rural England kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I just didn't feel like this book really executed what it said it was going to do. Like the title is literally Hands and I don't feel like I got, again, like a long way through, like maybe halfway through and we really did not have many chapters about skin picking, which I found frustrating. I feel like there was so much potential for this to be like sort of an expose or a social commentary or a sort of um, collection of interviews similar to Lucia Osborne Crawley's book on um, sexual violence. Like this could have been a really interesting group of voices all about people's experience with skin picking but it was more about this girl's holidays and camping and her twin sister and a lot of bad pop culture jokes so yeah I was really disappointed with that one actually um and then I have three more The Christie Affair by Nina de Grammar. I started this on audio and then lost access to it so it technically wasn't a DNF on purpose like I would go back to this particularly if I was looking for that like cozy mystery thriller vibe but then Jen reviewed it and said, I think she said she likes it, but she didn't love it. So then I wasn't really like up for going out to find it, like paying for the audiobook and waiting for it to come around back in the library. So yes, that wasn't necessarily anything to write home about. I just really wanted it in the moment. I was like ready to read it and then I lost access and then I was like, oh, I'm actually not that excited about it. Okay, White Magic. I heard a lot of people talking about this one on Instagram and then I spoke to couple of people who I saw on their stories and they had the same complaint as me is this is an essay collection but it's so confusing to read like it claims that it's going to be again about um one thing and turns out to actually be about something else so Alyssa is um talking about her experiences as a Native American woman and 
sort of the co-option of Native American practices into and spirituality into white Western culture, whether that's like smudging or sound baths or um, any of those sort of spiritual things that are repackaged to like in middle class white suburbia, basically, which all sounds so interesting to me. But it's a set of interconnected essays that talks a lot about her childhood, adolescence and like previous relationships where she dealt a lot with alcohol abuse, um, both herself and from partners and sort of all the different ways that she um, struggled with her mental health growing up and um, in her, like, as a young woman, which was really interesting and extremely traumatic to read. Like it's really, really heavy. And again, it just doesn't, it is 70% about that and 30% about commentary on co-option and cultural appropriation and I felt like because it wasn't even like one essay was about that and one essay was about this it was that they were so entwined together and I didn't really um I couldn't really separate the storylines and and someone else on Instagram said like oh do these essays keep doing that because I'm finding it really confusing particularly on audio I think perhaps if I was reading it it might have been different but on the audio experience it was just jumping around in time and space and comments on these different things and it just felt really really chaotic and it's also over 400 pages long and I was like okay that's a long audio book to get through for it to be this confused the whole way through so that was a real shame because I was super super interested in the topic of that one so and then the last book I DNF'd which I mentioned in the um cult videos that I made um to part one and part two about everything kind of about cults which is all about all the media I've consumed about cults and I spoke about this book called The Lightness by Emily Temple which I didn't know at the time but I think now is marketed as a young adult book and I just found the tone like completely off for me which is a shame but I kind of if I had known it was um young adult I probably would have never picked up anyway but it's about a group of girls who go to sort of like um what do you call it like teen like naughty girls teen camp but it's claimed to be like a meditation center where they can you know like similar vibes to the miseducation of Cameron Post but it's about like their toxic behaviours basically and in that camp there's a group of sort of like breakaway girls who are trying to learn how to do this like extreme version of meditation which um is sort of about I can't really remember but it's about like transcending basically and I just found the tone really off like it wasn't wasn't well well written in the sense of like the kind of language that I enjoy to enjoy reading found the girls really snarky but like not in a funny way at all just in like oh my god just so annoying um so I wasn't into that one at all which is a shame because the concept again was really interesting to me okay I think that's all the books I've DNF so far this year let me know if it's interesting to you um and I hope this provides some insight into my reading taste I guess and things I I don't DNF like as frantically as other people but I know lots of people don't DNF at all but I'm trying to get better at it because I feel like there's only so much time in the day you know and I want to read the books I want to read so let me know how you what your relationship to DNFing is as well as if you read or loved or hated any of these I would love to hear it love it if you subscribed commented etc etc and I'll see you in the next one bye